So we now move on to questions to the cabinet members. I think question 12, Councillor White. Uh, question 12 to the uh, cabinet member for housing. Councillor Salia, welcome to your new role. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for your question, Councillor White. Um, I'd like to thank you, first of all, for applauding our efforts in, um, in the private rental sector. The licensing scheme for the HMOs has been around since 2006. It's something that we have been happy to support the extension into the smaller properties. Uh, we've got the necessary resources already in place to, to do this. Uh, we, we have looked, I mean, frequently since 2006 and continue to look at expanding the licensing system, but the additional bureaucracy and the effect that it would have on the rental market, a, a market that is predominantly well managed within the borough, there are obvious exceptions to that, but we, we don't see that we have sufficient poorly managed properties to necessitate extension of licensing in the way that you've suggested. Supplementary. Councillor White. Um, yes, I'd like to congratulate Councillor Salia on her assumption of the role as uh, Cabinet Member for Housing. I look forward to working with her uh, in the coming months. And thank her for answering my question, uh, courtesy in short supply, it would seem. So. Um, uh, additional bureaucracy is an issue that rings alarm bells for me, uh, especially after the last debate. Wouldn't an extended scheme help to reduce evictions and homelessness caused by residents complaining about the very shortcomings that a licensed scheme could locate? I mean, that's definitely something we considered when we made the decision not to um, widen the licensing scheme. I've, uh, my understanding of it is that at the moment, residents are able to complain to the private sector housing team and they're able to work quite closely with landlords to try and manage their properties up to standards. I wouldn't have thought that in terms of looking at evictions and, and forcing people to be homeless, that extending the licensing scheme would, would change that situation. I think that at the moment the private sector team work very closely with landlords where people are in danger of becoming homeless to try and work through problems. And I think that kind of approach rather than a very bureaucratic, heavy-handed approach, which would affect the sort of 80, 90 percent of landlords that are doing a good job without being forced to, I think it would be overkill in a sense. Councillor Nardelli, you had a question. Sorry. Supplementary to the cabinet member, please. Okay. Um, how does the council strike a balanced approach to deal with private sector landlords? Thank you for your supplementary. Um, we have a clear enforcement policy at the moment that we have consulted about um, with residents and businesses locally and we believe that this is a, a very proportionate way of, of dealing with the few landlords that aren't um, keeping their, their properties up to standard. We can advise landlords on what's needed, we check, we follow up and we will prosecute if necessary. In fact, last week I got an email just before the council meeting that we've um, successfully prosecuted one unlicensed HMO landlord and they've been fined £4,516. So we do take robust measures when, when needed. <coughs> Thank you. Question 13, Councillor Lescott. Uh, yeah, question 13 to the Cabinet Member of Housing. Thank you, Councillor Lescott, for your question. Um, You'll be aware that uh, Darren Munro, the Fire Borough Commander, came to our OSC meeting recently um, and, ad and addressed the issue, amongst others, of sprinklers. He was very strongly in favour of the installation of sprinklers. Um, and, uh, in fact, all, all advice from colleagues in the Fire Brigade has been that, that sprinkler systems, which, which are now standard practice in the blocks over 10 storeys, um, should probably be retrofitted into blocks over 10 storeys, which is that 30 metre height, um, in order to make the buildings as safe as, as, as possible. Um, in deciding to retrofit, we've, um, we're investing 24 million into the um, sprinkler program. Um, we've looked at a number of building regulations which are listed here and considered the fire brigade guidance. Um, we've looked at a feasibility study as well and we are um, working hard with the legal teams, with, also with our landlords and with our tenants and leaseholders to sort of work through what, other, what the issues possibly could be on the fitting of sprinklers. <coughs> Supplementary uh, Lescott. Uh, thank you very much for that answer. Um, I want to thank you for that and pay tribute to the way the officers investigated our tower blocks and the 
thorough understanding of the detail and the facts that you uh, yourself have demonstrated uh, coming so soon in your tenure uh, as cabinet member. It, it really has done the council credit. Um, and I think uh, your answer relating to uh, sprinklers uh, serves to reassure certainly myself uh, with respect to uh, the, the measures that we're putting in place. Uh, Councillor Heath uh, uh, talked about reassurance that it can offer. And rather than what Councillor Grimston referred to being a knee-jerk reaction, um, can you tell us whether the residents uh, have demonstrated reassurance as well, have been reassured? Thank you for supplementary. Uh, yes, residents so far have reacted very positively um, to the news of the sprinklers. We've had a lot of compliments on the speed and quality of our response and they, this is a testament really to the officers and, and how well they've done to uh, keep residents, tenants and leaseholders updated and to work with them and give up their time on Friday evenings, weekends, you know, making sure that people really do understand what our approach is. Um, and again, in overclad blocks where we've actually now got 24-hour presence, to really reassure people. Um, we've had quite a few compliments actually on how well we compare to other London boroughs. Can supplementary, May? Councillor Mrs McKinney. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you uh, for your reply on sprinklers. We support the sprinkler programme, I'll just say that first of all. But I was wondering, in light of the conversations we've had recently, and I know the government is saying that it will help councils that can't afford to put the sprinkler systems in, but can I suggest to um, you, um, perhaps that you lobby your government for extra funding so that you can put the sprinkler systems in not only stories above 10, uh, blocks above 10 stories, but also, as mentioned earlier, for any um, uh, stock that you have. Okay. Thank you for your question. Um, I want to assure you that we are lobbying for funding for the 10 stories. I mean, although we have set aside the money, which is one of the benefits of having such carefully managed reserves, we are continuing to pursue central government funding. Um, and hopefully that will be forthcoming. I think in looking at the blocks under 10 stories, the, that, the reason for that cutoff was that that complies with current new build regulations. Um, and it was also the fire brigade advice. But if that advice were to change, you would definitely lobby for increased funding for that as well. Moving on, question 14, uh, Councillor Thomas. Question 14 to the Cabinet Member. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'd like to thank Councillor Thomas for his question. Uh, before I go into the answer, could I, I hope, speak on behalf of uh, all members to uh, thank you for your very sterling service uh, in this role over, I think, about 10 years. It's a very challenging portfolio, as, uh, as I'm beginning to discover, uh, and also to wish you well in your new, well, second-hand role, I suppose, as mayor, because you've obviously been mayor before, but to wish you a very uh, successful very mayoral year. Um, turning uh, to uh, Councillor Thomas's question, um, yes, I hope that he will uh, uh, welcome the, the, the additional funding from uh, the government. It's probably not falling off a, a money tree, but possibly a money shrub, but nevertheless, uh, the in injection of funds is very welcome uh, in a very challenging uh, environment. Uh, there is no uh, shortage of people uh, as we all get older uh, who will require uh, the services of uh, adult care. Uh, it is a very challenging financial environment. Uh, this is an enormous help toward it. I'm sure he will recognize that. He's a very fair person. I'm sure he will recognize that. Uh, and I'm happy to confirm that uh, all the money that we are receiving is being used to sustain and improve services. So Councillor Thomas. Thomas. Uh, well, I'd like to uh, uh, thank uh, uh, Councillor uh, Ellis uh, for his uh, response, uh, but also to welcome you to your uh, new uh, Cabinet uh, position, and I uh, wish you all the very uh, best uh, with that. Um, uh, can I also uh, confirm that uh, I absolutely do uh, welcome uh, this money. Uh, the written answer, however, does seem to uh, highlight uh, a bit of a gap between the amount of uh, money that uh, we're being uh, given uh, by the government and the uh, increase uh, in total expenditure that uh, we're going to see uh, on these vital services. Does he not agree with me that uh, given the pressures that I think is recognised on uh, adult care, um, that uh, residents might actually expect us to be uh, spending uh, the uh, full uh, amount of the money given uh, to us by government uh, on uh, uh, direct investment into uh, those services so we're not uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul and 
Uh, will he in particular look at the case for investing more than his current plans uh, in home care services and uh, residential care uh, services? I'm sure he'll agree that those are particularly uh, vital uh, services um, uh, and ones unfortunately where uh, the recent procurement exercise uh, has uh, elicited a somewhat uh, poor uh, market response. Does he not think it actually if we required providers uh, to uh, pay uh, their staff in those services uh, more, then we might do better at actually commissioning the capacity that we need for our residents? I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Thomas for his supplementary. Um, this is a very difficult one because the the demand, as I said in, in my initial answer, the demand for the services is not diminishing, it's, it's growing as we all uh, grow uh, older and those of us who are growing older are rather appreciative of that uh, particular fact. Um, there really is uh, no solution, I think, to, uh, to, to this particular problem other than to maintain the services uh, as best uh, we are able. Uh, this funding is used not just to maintain statutory services but also discretionary services and had the money not been made available to us, uh, as the councillor knows, and he's served on, on that committee for, for some time, uh, then those will be the first services that we would be looking uh, to not renew contracts with. So it, it is not an easy one. Uh, I think every council in the country uh, is finding this problem. The National Health Service is finding the problem, uh, and clearly there's a problem in the pension industry as well, because it is all uh, as a result of us all living longer and, and healthier lives, which is uh, obviously very a good thing, uh, but it comes at a price. And so I think to sustain the service as best we can, to develop the social work academies so that we actually retain social workers uh, rather than losing them to other authorities, I think things like that uh, are, should be commended uh, and I hope they will uh, receive the support of the opposition as well. Second supplemental, Mr Mayor. Councillor Lua. Thank you. Um, I too join with the Cabinet Member in welcoming the Improved Better Care Fund um, funding. Uh, would you also join me in welcoming the spirit of the fund um, as set out by the government to improve outcomes and cost efficiency of integrated social care services with our partners in the CCG and the NHS? I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Lewis for his question. I should also thank uh, Councillor Thomas for his very kind remarks about me as well, and uh, I'm very grateful to those, and it was, it was very nice of him to, to, to say those things. Um, yeah, and Councillor Lewis is exactly right. I think it is all about uh, cooperation uh, and working with uh, our partners. Um, I, I remember, you know, as a child, my grandmother saying, you know, well, when you're ill, the last place you want to be in is hospital, uh, which seemed a bit odd at the time, but I now understand what she means because people do feel safer and, and uh, 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 and more relaxed in their own homes and so uh, clearly uh, we must do everything we can to prolong uh, uh, people's lives and ensure they have happy and healthy lives and that can only be involved by uh, cooperating very fully with the, uh, the NHS uh, and the clinical commissioning group uh, I've uh, met uh, both of those bodies so far um, they speak very well of the cooperation they receive from council officers I did uh, actually say to them if there are any problems do please let me know because I don't just want to hear good news I want to hear if things are not going well because then we can help to put them right. Uh, at the moment they've assured me that there are no particular problems in that, in that regard. Um, clearly uh, it, it, everything comes uh, at a financial cost uh, and managing those costs is an important uh, matter for us all uh, and certainly I know the, the OSC will uh, scrutinise not only our, our own department here in Wandsworth but also the health service as well. Question 15 standing in the name of Councillor Peter. Can I understand? Question 15 the Cabinet Member. Uh, I thank uh, Councillor Humphreys for standing in and the answer is set out. I must say I've been surprised certainly all my time in my current role and uh, indeed for some years before that, if my memory serves me correctly, there's never actually been an opposition alternative budget. And if the Labour group and this council think they're going to run this council, you would have thought they'd actually come up with a budget of their own rather than just sniping from the side. Um, would, the, would the cabinet member agree with me that from, from my experience on the council and, and actually nationally as well, the, the only thing the Labour Party can agree on is either um, A, spend all the money and B, say no to everything that either the government or the council proposes as a measure to take place. Um, this may be a trend perhaps that might go viral on YouTube, uh, this saying no to everything. Um, does the cabinet member perhaps join with me in thinking that uh, next May the majority of the population in Wandsworth may as well also think the best thing to do with the Labour Party's proposals is just say no? 
<laughs> well, of course I do. But actually, it is a serious point because it's not just spending all the money, it is spending money that doesn't exist. Unlike the spendthrifts in national government, whether they be Conservative, Labour, or anything else, who proceed to spend far more than we can afford and to, and to f push that burden onto future generations, we in this council budget, uh, we, we balance our budget every year. We, we charge for the lowest council rates of council tax in the country and we have sensible reserves so we are able to use them when we have crises to come. I commend that not only to this, this council, but to this borough and to the, the country as a whole. I just wish national government did the same as well. Councillor Carpenter. Second supplementary. Um, I assume that... Uh, uh, Councillor Senior is referring to the fact that the central government of his party has managed to uh, more than double the national debt in the past seven years, racking up more debt than every government uh, since the Napoleonic Wars. So this is uh, not a very good thing. Also, of course, uh, his um, Prime Minister has found a magic money tree of a billion pounds to pay off the DUP Mafia, or at least the first instalment, because they'll be back. In a later debate, I will be outlining some of the policies we'll be putting forward in 2018. In 2014, we produced a fully costed manifesto, which was uh, reviewed, reviewed by officers and ag agreed that it was uh, it balanced the books, and we'll be doing the same in 2018, when, of course, we will take the council. Well, I look forward to seeing the, uh, the, the council's fully balanced budget. Of course, it was very emphatically uh, rejected by the electors in 2014. I suspect it will be very emphatically rejected by the electors in 2018 as well. But let's be honest about austerity. Because we hear an awful lot of talk about austerity. It's been banded around in various ways, some quite unpleasant tonight, actually. Uh, but actually, at the moment, the current government budget, uh, allowing for inflation, is still... 0.2% ahead of what Gordon Brown spent in 09-10. So whilst some areas of, of uh, government, local government, public sector pay, have had austerity, there's no denial about that, others have not. And I think it's uh, one of the most bizarre political things we've had, that we talked about austerity, we talked about it, we haven't actually had it. We haven't actually reduced government expenditure. Yes, we reduced government expenditure as a proportion of national income, thankfully, and we need to do more about that, but we're actually still spending more in that these days than 2010 after allowing for inflation. And that is one of the greatest disgraces we've had, the way in which the current national governments of all parties have said, let's just spend more money, let's borrow it, and we'll think how someone else will spend that in the future. That's utterly wrong, and we should all be ashamed of it. Question 16, Councillor Grimston. Thank you. Question 16 to the Cabinet member. Thank you, thank you Councillor Grimston, for your question. Um, I'll just highlight a couple of parts that are sort of important in this. I think the, the issue that nothing comparable has happened um, in, any, in any place, either in Wandsworth or elsewhere in the UK, um, is an important one. And uh, the insurance question, I think actually um, Councillor Heaster raised an interesting point on it, that the sprinklers now are, are, are very, very, very sensitive and heat sensitive. So I think that's sort of, it's a bit of a game changer um, in terms of, of what it means to have sprinklers in blocks for insurance reasons. And the retrofitting of sprinklers, we are still looking for, for legal clarification on it. And we will take the advice and bring it forward as a report to the Overview and Scrutiny Committee once it's available. So, Mr. 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 Firstly, can I congratulate the uh, Cabinet member on becoming the Cabinet member. I held the post uh, back when it was Chairmanship of the Housing Committee. It's a very fulfilling uh, job. I think one of the most fulfilling on the Council. I wish you well. Um, Two, two brief points. I mean, firstly, the question that I asked at Part E was really where would the cost fall? The cabinet member will be mad. There, there are many tenants in the borough who don't have contents insurance because they can't afford contents insurance. And it's not a question of the block insurance for the common areas, which I understand. But if a sprinkler does cause damage within a flat, will that be responsibility of the uh, 
tenant, or leaseholder, or will it be the general block cabinet? And secondly, will she publish the uh, questions, the, the briefing which was sent to the uh, to council about this? Because clearly, we need to know what questions are. If it's done under a uh, confidential basis. I think members will understand that. But it is essential that we see the questions which have been asked of, of council so we can make sure that we understand the issues that are uh, still of some question in a legal sense. I think to, to answer the first point about the sprinklers, I mean, my point that I'm trying to make is that they are very different now. They're very they're heat sensitive, so it would be very unlikely that they would fail function. My understanding I, I would, is that it would be a contents issue rather than a building issue but again I'm not an insurance expert so I can't guarantee um, that, that's the, that, that that's the correct answer. With the legal opinion um, once it comes back we'll be in a position to share it with all councillors um, and at, at the moment they're clarifying a number of issues and you know I'll, I'll, I would be happy to share the opinion with you once it comes back. One more. Um, Counts, question 17. Can I congratulate Councillor McDermott on her promotion to the Cabinet Member position for Education and Children and wish her well in that role. But can I also pay tribute to Councillor Tracy? It's been a privilege to work with you over the last year. I know you've been the lead member on education for many, 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 many years, longer than I can think. And also to lock Council, hold could with you, you ask your question, please? To time. And wish you well in spending more time with your family. So, question 17 to the Cabinet Member for Education and Children. Thank you, Councillor Ambash, um, and uh, thank you for kind words. Um, your question is, I don't think is that unexpected. I, I thought you might ask a question like that. And the answer actually is, I don't think we need to have it reported to our OSC. Um, this consultation has been going on for some time and as you know has been interrupted by, the, by elections etc um, but in the meantime the consultation has been widely um, reported to all our schools whether academies or maintained schools and governors have a chance to respond, respond head teachers have had a chance to respond and we have also responded and at this point I'd like to pay tribute also to Councillor Tracy who spearheaded the consultation response on our behalf and we have been we all agree that we do not have enough money um, in, in the, the education system at the moment but we're waiting for the outcome of the consultation and Councillor Tracy has been an absolute star a champion for all the children in, in the borough and particularly for the vulnerable ones and she's been tenacious in making sure that every penny is spent for the best of our children. So um, I think the best time to have um, the, anything reported to, uh, to the OSC is actually when we have the result of the consultation. And as for the second part of your question, um, not only has, have we responded to the co this consultation, uh, second part of your question, not only have we responded to the consultation, but in fact tomorrow I'm going to a London Council's event where I'm speaking on the panel, and yet again the same message will be taken to, to the government um, that London needs to be treated differently and um, on, on the money that comes to us. And also I have set in motion a meeting with Justine Greening so that I can actually personally talk to her about these issues. Supplementary. My question is not just about the national funding formula, um, Councillor McDermott, it's about the many factors, and I identified seven of them in the question, there may be more that have affected school budgets negatively. This year, apprenticeship levy, business rate, high needs, increased cost of national insurance, pensions, and delays in uh, education and health care plans. I can't understand why we don't want to untone this stone and find out what's underneath it and understand why our schools are experiencing cuts as a consequence of these seven and maybe other factors in the current year. Isn't it the responsibility of the local education authority to understand and comment on the resources for Wandsworth children and education? Some of the year pressures may indeed be caused by a Wandsworth factor, the delay in education and healthcare plans. Shouldn't we understand this, because we have a responsibility for unblocking it. Can you ask a question, if, please, If that's Council. the case. So in short, why are we not taking... No. 
I'm just summarising why we're not taking forward to the Education and Children's OSC. Isn't it the Cabinet member's responsibility to make sure there is proper scrutiny of Wandsworth children's education? Thank you. Thank you for your lengthy supplementary. Um, we, uh, we're all extremely aware of all the items you've, you've identified there. And, um, of course, we're working very hard to address them all. And um, one thing that I think we, we are particularly aware of, which you mentioned, the educational health care mm -hmm. plans. And, in fact, Councillor Ambash, you should be aware, as I was, when we both went to the latest meeting of the PRU, that actually two head teachers in the PRU actually have complimented the system on actually speeding up um, EHCPs. So, but I know we've got a lot, lot more work to do on that. But um, I still stick to my original answer, and um, I think the outcome of the consultation is the important time when we can debate all these issues. Supplementary Committee. Uh, the, the Cabinet Member will be aware that one of the key arguments that we hear in favour of changing the national funding formula uh, is that per pupil funding in the capital is greater than elsewhere in the country. Does she agree that the difference in funding is absolutely necessary uh, when we look at the difference in the proportion of pupils with special needs or enhanced salary costs for schools in London in relation to the rest of the country? Thank you, Councillor Covelli. Um, yes, I absolutely agree. agree. Um, from my knowledge, and I've worked across a lot of schools in London and um, also been on various governing bodies, the, the cost of special needs in London is, is more severe than the rest of the country. We seem to have, because we have a, a lot of different children turning up in London with different needs, special needs is a particularly expensive um, cost for us. So we do need to put that case forward to the government. <coughs> and also um, with the, um, the cost of living. I mean, it's not just teachers, but um, in all, all aspects of working in London, the, the cost of um, getting into work, of finding a house to live, that is all vital, and particularly vital for teachers, so that is one of the key planks we'll be pushing. Thank you, Councillor. Time for questions to the Cabinet members is now passed.